In this video, I'm going to show you the proper method to make hibachi vegetables at home. We'll discuss why almost everyone online makes them incorrectly. We'll go over the most common mistake that prevents you from getting restaurant quality results. And then I'll show you step by step how you can make hibachi vegetables in your own kitchen even better than any teppanyaki restaurant you've ever been to. So let's hop into the recipe. All right, super quick before we get started, I wanna break down why almost everyone online prepares hibachi vegetables incorrectly so you can avoid these mistakes. The number one thing most cooks on the internet are doing wrong is dumping all the vegetables in the pan at the same time. And don't get me wrong, I have the utmost respect for anyone that is creating content, but let me explain to you why this is a suboptimal technique. When you dump everything in at one time, the crowding of the pan lowers the heat significantly and you're not able to retain the high temperature necessary necessary to achieve good caramelization while also not overcooking the vegetables. Because each vegetable varies in its water content, porousness, and relative density, cooking everything at one time almost guarantees that some vegetables will end up underdone and too crunchy while others overcook and turn to mush. With hibachi cooking, we're looking for well caramelized, slightly crunchy vegetables with a bit of bite to them. So how do we accomplish this at home? The key is to cook each vegetable separately in batches. Only by taking into account the different temperatures and cooking times for each vegetable will you be able to achieve restaurant quality results at home. The next step in upping your side dish game is preparing the vegetables correctly. So for the zucchini, start by trimming off the top and the bottom, then make a cut lengthwise so you slice off all the skin on one side. Then turn it around and make the exact same cut down the opposite side. Now turn it so the cuts are on either side and the skin sides are at the top and bottom. And depending on the width of your zucchini, make two to three cuts through the skin side directly down. You're looking for slices roughly a third of an inch or a little less than one centimeter thick. And they should look like this. For the onion, I'm gonna show you the exact cut they use at the restaurant, and then I'm gonna show you how you should do it at home. So for the restaurant slice, trim off the stem end, and then using a paring knife, Peel back the skin and the first layer of the onion, which is usually very papery. Then trim off the root end and make a very thin slice off of any side of the onion so that it lays flat. This will prevent it from rolling around when you're cutting. Now make slices down the onion about every half inch or roughly one and a quarter centimeter. When it gets awkward on one side, turn it around and make the last few remaining slices on the other side. And this will give you the exact orbital cut used at the restaurant. Now, you'll often see teppanyaki cooks use these slices when they're preparing your meal. But they do this so they can have something to slice in front of you just for show. At home, it's much easier to get the slicing out of the way before we cook. So to finish the onion prep, simply take the ringed onions and make a cut down the middle and then another cut perpendicular to the first. This cross pattern will give you the exact finished slice they use at the restaurant. To prep the mushrooms, it's super easy. You'll just do a standard slice, but a little thicker than usual because it's a side dish. So take each cap and cut it into three or four pieces. And they should look like this when you're finished. When you're ready to cook the zucchini, heat some oil in a nonstick pan over medium heat. After the oil is hot, add your slices to the pan. And notice, we're not adding any salt or seasoning right now. We will later, but at this stage, it would cause it to give up liquid, and we don't want that. After you've got a nice sear on one side, turn it over and get a nice sear on the second side. Then flip it back over and take a dollop of hibachi garlic butter and spread it on both of the zucchini. If you'd like to learn how to make hibachi garlic butter, I'll link to it at the end of this video. Then season it with salt and pepper and a little bit of soy sauce. Rub the soy over both of the zucchini, then flip it over and season the other side with salt and pepper. Flip it over one more time so this side gets a bit of the melted garlic butter and soy sauce mixture. Then remove it from the heat, and before you serve it, slice each zucchini into six pieces and garnish with a little bit of sesame seed. Cooking in this manner will ensure that you have a well-seasoned side dish that isn't just a bland, watery mess like you see everywhere online. For the onion, heat some oil in a nonstick pan over medium-high heat. After the oil is hot, add the onion. And notice once again, we're not adding any seasoning at the beginning. We will season later, but we want to get a nice sear first. Leave the onions alone for about two minutes so they get some nice color on one side. Then give a good stir and leave them alone again for another couple minutes. When you see the onions have color all around, but are still at the stage where they have a bit of crunch and aren't totally soft, then season with some salt and pepper. Put in a dollop of hibachi garlic butter and a couple squirts of soy sauce and stir the onions. Now, we're not really looking to cook it more, we're just letting the butter and soy emulsify into the onions. 
Then kill the heat and sprinkle with some sesame seeds and stir once again. To serve, you'll just want to garnish with a bit more sesame seed. For the mushrooms, heat some oil in a nonstick pan over medium high heat. When the oil is hot, add them to the pan with some salt. Notice, we do want to draw out the water from the mushrooms as quickly as possible, so the salt will help with that. Give a stir and cook until they're done to your liking. Then right before you're done, add a bit of garlic butter, some cracked black pepper, and some soy sauce. Then give a good stir and make sure they're coated in the melted butter and soy mixture. Now, the mushrooms are served just like this without any additional garnishes. So I hope I've changed your mind about cooking vegetables separately and not just dumping everything into a pan. You don't have to settle for a bland, mushy side dish. When prepared correctly, hibachi vegetables are actually an amazing side dish that can totally elevate your meal. If you'd like to learn how to make Benihana's hibachi garlic butter, make sure to check out this video. And if you'd like to learn some more hibachi at home recipes, make sure to check out this playlist. Thanks for watching. See you next time.